Hello, FJA students. For today's notebook entry, we will be doing a entry on functions. So you can title your notebook entry that. We're gonna be taking one page of notes and then entering this little cutout. Um, before we do this cutout, you are gonna need scissors, pencil, and tape or glue, of course, as per usual. Um, but before we even get to those cuttings, um, pause the video here and I want you to take all of these notes into your notebook. This should only take you about five minutes or so. Um, so it is relation, a set of ordered pairs. The domain is all x coordinates. The range is all y coordinates. And here's some examples. So we've got our ordered pairs, 1, 4, 3, 12, 5, 20. And our domain is 1, 3, and 5. All of the x's and the y's are the range, 4, 12, and 20. A function now, that's a special relation where each input domain or each input, which is the domain, so x's are the input, has exactly one output, the range, so that is our y. So our example set, we had 1, 4, 3, 12, and 5, 20. Well, you can see how each domain unit, or each member of our domain, like 1, only tracks to 4 for an output. So when x is 1, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 12, and 5 is, or when x is 5, y is 20. That set is a function because each input has only one output. However, example two, we've got four ordered pairs. We've got one, four, two, five, two, six, and three, seven. And as you can see, when we set up our domain and our range, our x's and our y's, actually the two member of our domain tracks to both five and to six. And so this is not a function because the input two has multiple outputs, five and six. Take those notes, really important for your test, and then pause the video. Once you have that done, we're gonna cut out this. You're only gonna need half of that page. Cut on the dotted lines. Once you have all of your notes done, make sure you have one of these cut out with our little tabs here, and then we're gonna flip to the next page glue this into the middle of that page like so only along this spine so that these can still flap up in fact you might even fold them before you go ahead and glue this down onto the page here we have three different tables of inputs and outputs so First thing to note is that these are all functions. So each member of our domain, or the x's, so those are our inputs, each input has only one output. For all of these sets, each input has just one output. There's no input that has multiple outputs, so they are all functions. But what do you think the relationship is? Pause here and see if you can figure out what the relationship is in this first table. What's the relationship between x and y? Well, you may have discovered that the relationship is that every y value is four times the value of its corresponding x value. So one times four is four, three times four is 12, and y times four is 20. So these are all equations. These are all function equations that could be represented by y equals four x. And to prove it, let's just substitute in. So we've got y equals 4x. Well, let's say when x equals 1, then y equals 4 times 1, which means y equals 4. And let's do that again with maybe 5. So when x equals 5 here, y equals 4 times 5. So y would equal, well, 4 times 5 is 20. And sure enough. So that is our relationship. See if you can find the patterns and the relationships between these two charts as well. What would be the equation to represent those relationships? Some of you may have noticed that um, the relationship between these all kind of has to do with squares. If we go back to our exponents lesson and think about what squaring is, that's taking a number to the second exponent, so like two to the second power or two squared. Well, what is two to the second power? 
That's four. What's three to the second power? Three to the second power, that's three times three, that's nine. Four to the second power, that's four times four, that's 16. Ah, so it looks like the pattern here is we square x, so x times itself, or x to the second power, two times itself, two times two, and then we subtract one from each of those. So the relationship is y equals x squared minus one, x squared minus one. Let's just test that out. So let's start with x equals two. So we have x equals two. That means y equals two squared, because we substitute in two for x, minus one. That means y equals four minus one, so y would equal three. And sure enough, that's our relationship. Let's try it on three, too. So when x equals three, y would equal, we'll substitute in three for x, that's gonna be three squared minus one. So y equals nine minus one, so y equals eight. And sure enough, it works, and it would continue to work. Our last relationship here, perhaps you have noticed that if you were to have x, so you divide it by two, each of our x values, and then we add one, we would get this. So one divided by two is 0.5 or half, and you add one, that's one and a half. So our relationship here is y equals x over two plus one. Let's try it out. Let's try it with one. x equals one. So we substitute x for one. So that's one divided by two plus one. Y equals one divided by two is 0.5 plus one. So y equals 1.5. Five. And it also works when we have x equals 5. So y would equal 5 divided by 2 plus 1. What is 5 divided by 2? 5 divided by 2 is 2 and a half, or 2.5 plus 1 would mean that y is 3.5. And there you have it.